Hi guys, welcome back to the garage for video number two today. Um, first of all, I want to say that uh, I'm going to unbox the Demon Tarot. Now, usually I'm fun loving and uh, all happy and good with this stuff, but this is a topic that I'm extremely serious about. Um, that's why I debated on whether I wanted this tarot deck or not. Uh, when I was in my 20s, I played with the dark side. And uh, I learned some very valuable lessons during that uh, time period. And so, of course, I've grown older and wiser. Um, but I do understand the dark side. I do understand what it brings. And um, in my older years, I've generally kind of shut down uh, that side of me, but something is awakening that uh, in me again. And so I'm not certain where it's going to bring me, but there are stirrings and it was enough for me to buy this. So, um, so let's, let's start. So this is the Demon Tarot. Um, it is by, uh, Ariana Osborne, original illustrations by uh, Louis Breton from Jacques Auguste Simon Colin de Plancy's Dictionnaire Infernal. That's the Infernal Dictionary. So the back reads What does the demon tarot hold in store for you? Summon the power of internal being, infernal being, beings to guide you on your path. For the 1863 6th edition of his Dictionnaire Infernal, the Infernal Dictionary, a volume occult demonologist Jacques Auguste Simon Colin de Plancy commissioned over 500 unique engravings, including 69 signed illustrations by Louis Breton, mostly compelling portraits of his named demons. Now, author Ariana Osborne has created a match set of 69 cards out of Breton's works and written a companion book of illustrated entries for each. These entries detail each demon's attributes, compiled not only from the dictionnaire, but from a variety of other sources. Osborne's own interpretations and insights into the subject of each card and focused meanings to use in a traditional one-card draw or six card spread, the next best thing to dragging a demon into your living room to answer all of your questions. So it's 69 illustrated demon cards and a 169 page book. So let's see, I did take the plastic wrap off and I'm not happy because there are, there are no, um, there are no, you know, they have the tabs on the, the top of the box, but the cover covers the tabs. So it's kind of hard to, you know, get into the box if the tabs are covered. Um, okay, so we have, um, comes like this. So the book is on top and the book is in shrink wrap. So handy dandy little <laughs> scissors here and well, have a look at the book okay I love new books now okay so it starts out um, preface all the okay so it goes to the preface and then right on into the demon cards and each demon has a, a full page with a drawing of the the card and it has uh, the inspiration and the divination and the background on the demon in question so or anything else in the in the book here no 
book is book is pretty straightforward. It's there's no spreads, nothing. It's just um, the interpretations of the cards, and uh, they come like this. So slide that off there. I don't particularly like it like that with the insert, but anyways, all right. Ooh. Okay. Well, I don't like this already, but I don't have an option, and this is how they came. Kind of looks, I don't know if you guys can see the discoloration on the bottom. No, it doesn't show. There's some discoloration here, and some of the cards in the middle are kind of smushed or are not uh, not um, cut properly. Anyways, so here are here are the backs. Interesting. I wonder who who is on the back. Cards are a little bowed. Here we go. Um, so it looks like they're black and white. And it has some information on the bottom about each of the demons. Yes, in my younger years, I played with uh, fire. My first introduction was the Ouija board. And I was addicted to the Ouija board. I talked with somebody 24-7 as often as I could. And uh, things got worse from there. But Eventually, something in here realized something was wrong. And so, I turned that around. And then I pursued my homework in demonology. I did not, uh, I didn't go to school and become a demonologist and all of that. But I have done my homework. So, I understand. Uh, this this realm and this world and as I'm sure dead cheeky can attest to this is nothing to be fooled with if you do not know what you're doing plain and simple I can tell you that there are very few actual demons in the world as opposed to what people may think. There are spirits and things that we as humans have manifested. But they're not demons. They're something else. So, um, I'm really loving these depictions. And they're so striking. They're very striking, but um, I love, I'm, I'm enjoying the looks. Some of these demons I do know, a lot of them I don't. We're going to see what happens. Ooh, that's an interesting card. Lamia. Lamia was once a beautiful queen whose grief over the loss of her children turned her into a monster. Lamia also refers to later monsters, women who rob graveyards to feed on the dead. Hmm. 
Interesting. Everyone's favorite, Lucifer. I appreciate these cards. Having, uh, you know, done some work in this area. I have never seen, though, this many named. So I'm intrigued by that. Um, I'm intrigued to really look at the cards in the book and um, he does provide a bibliography in the back as to some of his other references because there are other references than uh, his own. He looks familiar. These are ingenious, ingenious? No, I'm not sure if that's the word or not, but these are these are very slick individuals. So um, I really love the simplicity of the drawings. And I'm anxious to find out um, if these came from his psyche or someone else's. Okay. And here is the last card. So there you have it, folks. There are all the cards from the Demon Tarot. Um, I think I will do a deck interview spread um, with this deck. And uh, I don't know how it looks like a tarot. It looks more like an oracle deck to me. Although it did say that I could do a one card draw or a six card draw. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens here. But in the meantime, I'm just going to go ahead and... Uh, I'm going to pull a card here and see see what we got. See what this demon tarot wants to say to me. What do you want to say to me right now? Hmm. Okay. Apparently, Balak, Volak, Balak wants to speak. Volak is a president of hell with 30 legions at his command. He takes the form of a beautiful child with the wings of an angel and he rides a two-headed dragon. Okay, notice, I get the president of hell. Okay, let's see what it says in the book. Annotation. Uh... Volok is a president of hell in command of 30 infernal legions, according to Weyer's Pseudomonarchia Daemonum. His face and figure are those of a beautiful young boy child with the wings of an angel. His voice is soft and sweet, and his demeanor is gentle and kind to all appearances. Volok could be the visual inspiration for the Renaissance Puti, but for his choice of transport, a ferocious two-headed dragon. Inspiration. Volok is a gentle and non-violent demon by all accounts, but he has the gift of communication with all serpents. His gift allows him to find any snake in the world, and he can speak to it, and it will answer his questions and follow his commands. And so, although Volok does not look very powerful, he has at his disposal a host of powerful and clever creatures from the great dragon he uses as a steed to the tiny grass snakes that can seek the locations of hidden treasures. Divination. 
beware of underestimating soft-spoken or mild-mannered individuals. Many capable individuals are easily overlooked because they are quiet. Hello, Ted Bundy. Yeah. So, yeah, I think we're, we're going to have uh, an interesting road together. So there you have it, guys. Uh, I hope you like the walkthrough. Let me know what you what you think about this, and uh, if you have any thoughts on demons, demonology. So uh, much love, and I'll see you next time.